What we have here is a Gilligan's Island. And Gilligan's Island is notorious for fading if left in areas with high UV. And this- Not so much this side. This side's not bad. The other side- you The see. front's pretty bad, but this side, super faded. Yes, quite pale. Yes, and the head is faded too, which is unusual because on a lot of Bally Williams games in this era, the head was- Different ink. Different ink right. than they did on the lower cabinets. But apparently on this game, um, not so much. Yeah, we're gonna wanna bring that color back as well. So I have my buddy Jeff here. He helped us do something similar on a black rose. And now he's gonna work some magic on the Gilligan to bring some color back to the cabinet because it just looks really washed out. So Jeff has some frisket with a blue tint that we bought on Amazon. Right. And what do you, explain what's going on here. So the first thing I wanna do when I bring back color to this is I wanna work with what I'm airbrushing. And what I'm gonna be airbrushing is this field right here, the sky with Bali on it. It's gonna be sunset. It's gonna be yellow all the way down into the water and around these pine trees. And we're going to take and we're going but to it, go, it goes yellow orange red, red. It, it sunbursts yeah. what i'm going to oh. do i'm going to do the whole thing yellow and i'm going to make sure bali is taped off and then i'm going to start fading red in from the top down so it'll give the sunset effect i'm going to do that and here. you'll end up with orange in the middle because of the yeah, of the, the because of the overspray right. between, of the red over the yellow yep, you got it right and i'm going to do this here right behind gilligan's island too it kind of fades through kind of like that right if you look at the other side but that's what we're going to do and we're using frisket film to tape everything off and we're using a blue tinted one which is kind of nice because when you cut this out obviously oh you can see the areas exactly better see what you have cut out you can use transparent which i've used in the past but you got to remember exactly what you cut out and if you forget to cut something out and you spray paint over it or you airbrush over it then you're kind of screwed mm. so blue tint works pretty good i'm happy to be using that and we're mimicking this effect here Correct. just uh, it'll be a little more uh, vibrant because you know this side's yeah. obviously faded jeff now is trimming with an exacto the areas that he wants to cut out leaving the areas to be masked so we don't get paint on things we don't want paint on and the frisket trim is really easy. You don't have to use a lot of pressure and you're gonna to wanna to use a brand new X-Acto knife blade when you do this. So you don't have to press down a lot or you're definitely gonna get into the original art of the machine. So now we got the frisket cut yeah. and Jeff is just gonna peel. And what you wanna do is you wanna grab a corner and start peeling slowly. Now, you're gonna be making such intricate cuts around this stuff that you might end up finding something that you forgot to cut like this right here. Get ready to get ready to maybe make a little cut when you're peeling this off. If you didn't get it perfect. If you didn't get it perfect. And the black tree stuff, you're just going right over. Yeah, because we're using transparent yellow. That's one of the nice things about using transparent yellow. You can go over the trees. Now, here's the thing. If you go over a tree and you don't like it, you can always take an X-Acto knife or something and you can scrape the transparent yellow off the tree if you really want to. But look at how intricate that is. That'll take you a while. So yeah. we're just gonna peel this off slowly. And I left some. Yeah, I see what you're doing. Yeah, you see this piece broke off. It was a little. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, so yeah. See. Oh, and then that goes down to the. It goes down to the water. So we got two different cuts happening here. So just take your time. And you can see the Bali is going to stay blue. You mean we're... Bali? Yeah, Bali. Keep on calling it Bali. It's Bali. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back and peel these sections off later. Oh, inside the yeah. then the yells. But you see how that A, A wanted to lift up right there, so we're gonna have to like uh, do a little bit of extra cutting around the A to get that to stay down. There. Nice. But uh, yeah, you just go slow, and uh, and you can get everything. This is what it looks like when you've got your frisket cut out. So we cut it out around the bali. We cut it out around the field here. And if you look at these places in the boat, in the minnow, we cut it out around those. All of this is gonna be yellow. We've also done it around the Gilligan's Island. And you can see, it doesn't look like I hugged the black line. That's because there's actually a white border that's right here that we wanted to protect. So, white border right here. So anywhere where there's blue, you're not gonna get paint. That's right. And okay. what we're gonna do now is we're gonna tape the rest of it off in white paper. 
that does two things. It saves expensive frisket film, and when you're starting your airbrushing, you got a white field that you can test spray on before you get down here and start doing your business. So it does two things. So that's what we're going to do, be doing next, using white paper to tape it off. For airbrushing, when you get the paper laid out around the fields that you want to airbrush, like I said, this is going to save you money by not uh -oh, using the more expensive frisket, and it's also going to give you a place to test spray where you can test your coarse pattern or fine patterns before putting it on the actual work surface. So. so basically all this area that's yellow, faded yellow, it's going to be... Brighter yellow and then with the sunset. Yeah, it's, right. So you get a sunburst from yep. yellow up to orange, up to red. Yeah. Okay. And you're going to shoot it first with the yellow, yep. then do the, the sunburst with the red. Right. You've seen us tape this off. We've got these fields that we want to put some yellow down on, and I've got the yellow thinned out and mixed up and put in this canister here. And I've got a dual control airbrush, which you push down for the air and you pull back for color. So I've got these dual controls. And what I've done here He's is- He's running a little compressor. Yep, little compressor at 60 PSI. That's where I have it set at. I put a pull down on here. So I can do a little bit of test passes, which you see I've done right here. So like I said, you push down for- Because you've got to get your yep. the the paint the right viscosity. Yeah, I want to so, make sure it's working. You can see right there, it's going on pretty light, so. Is that what you want, light? That's, that's what I want. So You want to start there. Yeah, so I'm going to flip that out of the way. And we're going to start painting, going from here all the way across and even passes to get the yellow back into this. It's got some yellow into it, but it's not as vibrant. The yellow is pretty see. faded. Yeah, so. We had to repaint all the yellow everywhere else, so. Look at you wasting all that paint in the center. That's right. Good thing I'm not paying for this. Oh, you don't want wait a minute. You don't want to stop halfway through though. And you don't want to glop it on. That's what she said. So you want to put it on the light. If you get any runs in this, You've gone way too thick. Yeah, I could see the yellow coming up. So it's going to take. So a I, I don't necessarily agree with the, how you're doing it, though. To be honest with you, if it was me, half and half. yeah, I would go half and half. I would do the valley side and then I do the Gilligan side. All right. You know, that but that's just me. You can do it that way. Well, I think you need a lot more yellow. Yeah, we're that gonna yellow was seriously faded. Yeah, we're gonna let that dry. You're gonna let and that, how long do you let it dry? Only about five minutes, but you've got three different selections as far as the spool that goes in this and the nozzle. This is for fine. I've got a coarse and I've got a extra fine. I'm probably gonna change this to coarse to try to get a little bit more yellow out of it. Look at you, listening to me. Trying it out. It's not as satisfying, but it looks pretty good. Yeah, it does well. look good. Change the needle to add a little volume. We got volume, all right. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Rumsey's practicing his sunbursting while Cancer insists on playing the game. <laughs> I'm sure there's some reason for this, but it's really hard to say. If he screws this up, he's just going to run away because there's no going back. Look, he's still chickening out. He's not even on the on the area to be painted yet. He's just he's trying to get his mojo together. There he goes. Look at that. Let's start with that. All right. You going to do the other side now? Yeah. All right. Wait, I, I get warmed up on the left. I'm going to get warmed up too. There you go. Trying to get the feel.
Nice. How much more across the top do I go? You got to come down, I think, just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. I would just make another run. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now maybe you got to hit a little more here. Yep, stop. I think you nailed it, Jeff. All right, we're taking paper off. Hey, somebody put pennies on Gilligan's eyes. Why would they do that? What's that all about? And all I know is Gilligan needs red arms. Now look at that. He's wearing a totally different color shirt. Yeah, he is. Well, I mean, let's compare Gilligan. My banana yellow shirt, Skipper. Ha! <laughs> Man. Red shirt. He's a red shirt. I'm just gonna take it all there, try it. Island and Gilligan. Have to add another coat, but it's getting there. Jeff's working on the blue mess ups on the on the head of the cabinet. Find some yellow on this bamboo. Look at that. Works real nice right away. It really brings it out. It I does. mean, it was so faded. I thought it was gonna be a real shit show, but yeah. And you got to go over like where the blue dots are. You oh, got to yeah. because that has yellow behind it too. Mm -hmm. You know because it's super faded. It's all really bad. All right, but they both each thing has a long white part there. And yeah, I, I, it and you know what nice. though, you don't really have to be that careful. When you do this, you really don't. That's the nice thing about the transparent yellow. Transparent yellow is the easiest of any color to put on. We redid the front of the cabinet. The Gilligan's got red. This line got red around the start button got red. And then we did all the yellow. So the front looks really nice now compared to its faded version that we had before. We're all finished. I think the Gilligan's, we gotta maybe do a little more in his shirt. It's a little splotchy, but Man, did this come out nice. Wow. And the front, that's all like really spanky. And though we didn't re-sunburst the yellow to red, this is original on this side. We redid all the yellow um, in his shirt. Came out quite nice. We were quite happy with it. I mean, compared to the faded we used on the cabinet these guys were what we airbrushed and also what we hand brushed through the transparents to bring the color back um the blue here we use just on the general blue cabinet paint it's a little bit of black and then where we're all done you got a clear coat uh, we use bubble 13 uh, which is kind of the same as the tough coat uh, as an acrylic lacquer clear coat. If you don't clear coat, the stuff will just wipe off. Uh, it's not very durable until you get a clear coat on it. For their help. <laughs> until next time, we're gonna be all on an island. That was just supposed to be a three hour cruise. Yeah.